Okay, let's see how this goes here. So, <laughs> we've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right, we've got um, notes here we're going to take. Just a few, okay? I don't want to do something too intense here because I want to leave you a good amount of time to also review, okay, for tomorrow's quiz. So, We're going to be graphing transformations of f of x equal to x squared. Okay. Now, I'll tell you to this. I'll tell this to you again. Right? We've already transformed absolute value. We're going to be transforming x squared, and there's at least two or three, maybe even more functions that we will be transforming throughout the remainder of this class. Okay. So. The better you can understand how to transform these functions earlier on, the easier it'll be later to <coughs> we do the exact same transformations, just with different functions. Okay? So the idea is the transformations do not change. Okay? The transformations don't change. We're gonna shift things left and right. We're gonna shift things up and down. We're gonna vertically stretch, we're gonna vertically shrink, we're gonna reflect on the x-axis, okay? Those don't change. So the sooner you can kind of get a grasp on those, the easier the next ones will be coming too, okay? Because again, the transformations don't change. It's just the thing that we are transforming that changes. That's it. All right. So let's first here graph the parent function. Okay. F of x equals x squared. Okay. Because if you remember back when we did that um, that activity on Desmos, I believe it was Desmos, where it said there's you know, there's not more than one parabola in the world. There's one parabola and it just transforms, right? And so that is our one parabola that we're gonna transform, the parent function, okay? And then all the transformations that I guess you could think of it like it's children, okay? So let's graph this thing, okay? Just so we remember it here. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, perfect. Okay. I'm also going to draw a table over here to help us out. Does anyone remember where the vertex of the graph of x squared is located? Is plain old x squared where the vertex is located? On the origin, yeah, 0, 0, OK? So I'm going to put that 0, 0, the vertex here, I'm going to put that in the middle of my table, OK? And once you find that vertex, and I'll, again, I'll help you figure that out here if you, if you forgot how to do it for other times and stuff like that. We'll, we'll do that. But once you find the vertex, I, would let, I want you to put it in the middle of your table, okay? And then I want you to pick some x values that are less than that vertex. So 0, let's go to negative 1 and then negative 2. And let's pick some x values greater than that 0, so like 1 and 2, okay? And let's just make sure that, in fact, 0, 0 is our vertex here. We'll plot these other points here, too. So I'll go ahead and plot the point 0, 0. All right. We know that's going to work, right? If I pick the x value of 0, 0 squared is going to be, well, just 0. So that's obviously that 0, 0, that's a point there. Okay. Let's check these other ones, though. What is negative 2 squared? So when you square something, you're multiplying it by itself, right? So what's negative 2 times negative 2? 4. Okay. How about negative 1 squared? One. How about one squared? Yeah. One. How about two squared? Four. four. Okay, let's plot these points now. Negative two, four. One, two, three, four. Negative one, one. Zero, zero. One, one. And then two, four. Okay. And then connect the dots. So sure enough, it looks like We are, in fact, 0, 0 was our vertex there. And 0, 0 is the vertex. Okay. 
We can also call the vertex here. In this case, it is a minimum. Okay, right? It's the lowest point. The vertex for a parabola, the vertex for a parabola will always be a minimum or a maximum. Just like the vertex for the absolute value function was always either a minimum or a maximum point. Okay? Now, this kind of like U shape that we get for the parabola, I'm going to call that concave up concave up like a cup, right? If you were to pour water in it, it would kind of hold it like a cup, right? If it's upside down, right? If, it, if it's like the U is like, you know, facing downwards or it opens downwards, right? I'm going to call that concave down, like a frown, okay? Concave down is actual mathematical terminology, right? Concave up, actual mathematical terminology. The rhyming is just to help you, or the words are just, you know, concave up like a cup, concave down like a frown. That's just to help you remember the shape, okay? The way it works, okay? So this is concave up, okay? Uh, another th a property here, right, of uh, this quadratic uh, function, x squared, is that it's symmetric, right? If I were to, like, fold the graph over the, over the y-axis here, it would completely match up right here. So in other words, uh, once I've found negative 1 and negative 2 to have these y-coordinates, I can just use symmetry, right? This, this point right here was 1 away, so then I'll go 1 away this way. This point right here was 2 away from my axis of symmetry, and so this is going to be 2 away from my axis of symmetry, too. So in other words, you don't really need to find, to calculate all five points. You can use symmetry to get the other points if you want to. Don't feel like you have to do all that, you know, all the calculations there. Once you get this point and this point, just use symmetry. Use symmetry. Feel free. Okay? So that's the parent function. And what we're going to do today now is transform this using our standard kind of transformations that we saw already in the absolute value. So let's take a look at what those transformations are going to look like. All right, so I'm going to scoot over here. So let's talk about transformations of f of x equals x squared. Okay. And again, I'm going to write something that's hopefully familiar to you, right? Um, a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. So there's a little x squared hiding in there. But it's got a minus h in there with it. It's got a plus k on the outside. It's got an a being multiplied with it there, too. Okay? <coughs> All right, so who remembers? What do one of these, what does a, what does h, what does k, what do one of these numbers do <coughs> to our function? How does it transform things? What do you say? <coughs> What's that? Go ahead. K is the starting point. A is the starting point. Okay, what does A do? How does it transform things? Forgot? Trees? Okay, so how does that determine? What, what, what A values make it flip or not? If it's negative, it'll flip and be concave down. If it's positive, it stays concave up. Okay, that's right. Yep. Jack, did you have something you wanted to say? I heard you uh, say something. Okay, K is the Y. What do you mean by that? What does it do? What does it do transformation-wise? Okay, it does have something to do with the Y axis. How does it shift things? Up and down. Exactly right. It shifts things up and down. Okay, so yeah, let's start to formalize this a little bit here. Okay, so um, I need to leave myself some space. So I'll put the K over here, and I'll say, yeah, if K is greater than 0, so if we're adding a positive K here, is that going to shift up or shift down? Okay, we're going to shift up k units, and I'm going to zoom in on this now, I think. Okay, so if k is greater than zero, we shift up, which means then if k is less than zero, we're going to shift down, right? Or correct, I mean, I shouldn't say right. Down k units. Oops, I'm off the screen. There we go. Okay, so k greater than zero, shift up k units. K less than zero, shift down k units. Okay. And then, yeah, let's do what Teresa was saying there, too. So I might have to do, let's see, I don't know if I'm going to have enough space. We'll see. Okay, yeah. A greater than 1, 0 less than A less than 1, and A less than 0. Okay, so Teresa said A less than 0, it flips over the x-axis. And... 
stretch as well, or shrink, depending. Okay. So she was right. If we have a negative A value, it does flip, but we also might have to do a stretching or shrinking. If A is greater than 1, what kind of stretch is that going to be? If A is greater than 1, what kind of stretch will that be? Uh, well, sorry, it'll be a vertical stretch, right? And then if A is between 0 and 1, it's still positive, it'll not be a vertical stretch, it'll be a vertical shrink. OK? And then same thing is true if A is less than 0. <coughs> if A is like negative 1 half or negative 1 third. So if A is between negative 1 and 0, it flips, and that's a vertical shrink. Excuse me. And if A is um, l more, like less than negative 1, so like negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, stuff like that, then it will be a vertical um, stretch, but has to flip. OK? Right, we got one more here. And I'm not going to fit it in here, so I'll have to go down here, I guess. What does the H do? Left and right, exactly right. So in this case, with the way I have it written, if I have x minus h, so if I subtract a positive number, if I do x minus like 2, okay, if I subtract a positive number, then we're going to shift right h units. Okay, and if then if h is less than 0, we'll shift left h units. Okay. And again, you're going to say the same exact thing next unit, and the unit after that, and maybe even the unit after that. Okay, All these transformations are going to appear again. Okay, So we can generalize these trans, and that's why we, we, you know, well, that's why we learn them, is because they're so useful in all these different functions we're going to talk about. Okay. So, questions on any of that? All familiar, right, from the absolute value stuff that we've been doing? Yeah? Okay. Then, I'm going to do three examples here for us. Okay, we're going to do three examples here together of just transformations and stuff. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone still writing this here? Yes. All right. Bless you, bless you. Okay. What transformation is missing here that we didn't talk about? We didn't do any horizontal stretching or shrinking. Right? We don't have to worry about that one here, actually. Okay? We didn't have to really worry about it in the absolute value stuff either, okay? Because we can actually take care of that with a vertical stretch or shrink too. All right? All right. Ready to move on? Anyone still writing? All right, here we go. Let's take a look at an example then. So Let's graph uh, g of x equal to uh, the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 1. So again, let's graph g of x equal to the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 1. Okay. So let me see here. Now, for these purposes, for our purposes, I'm going to graph the parent function again. Okay, so I'm going to graph plain old parent function x squared. All right, so I'm just going to reuse those same points we had. So 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, uh, negative 2, 4, and then 2, 4. Okay, and just to kind of, just to have a comparison in here. Okay, just have a comparison in here. Okay. Why did I do that? Well, let me show you. I'm going to graph the g of x in red. Okay, just a different color here, just for comparison's sake. Okay. What kind of transformations 
are indicated here in this function of x squared. How, how are we supposed to transform plain old x squared here to be this? What does this tell us to do? Up one and? Yeah, this one's the tricky one, right? So the plus one, it's intuitively, it's what you would think should happen, right? So plus one, up one. But the minus two, it's the opposite of what you'd expect, right? So minus two, you think, oh, we should go left two, but actually it's right two, like we're gonna go right two, okay? So right two, up one. Okay, so let's take that vertex. We'll shift it right two, one, two, and then up one, up one, right there. There's our new vertex. <clears throat> okay, now at this point, right, once we transformed the vertex when we did absolute value, that was easy because then we could just use the slope to get more points, right, of the absolute value function, right? So this is absolute value, it'd be like a slope of one. We just go up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one. We'd have that diagonal line. We go up one, left one, up one, left one, up one, left one, do the diagonal line, unless there was a number in front and that would change the slope, of course. Okay. But here we're not talking about lines, right? We have this like curve. So how can we transform, how can we transform the rest of the curve, right? We got the vertex, how can we transform the rest of the curve? Well, you have a couple options, okay? Option one, transform the other points that we already have here, just like you did the vertex. So for example, this point, move it right two and up one, and there's its transformation. Take this point, move it right two and up one, and there's its transform point. And you can see it's in the right position there, right? Same thing here, take this point, move it right two and up one, and take this point, move it right two and up one. And then connect the dots and you can see. that it transforms it for us. Okay, just by transforming those points. <coughs> okay, so that's option one. Okay, of course, in order to use this option, right, you have to have the original, you have to have the plain old x squared function graphed. Okay, and then you just shift every point, right to up one, 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 kind of thing. You can do it that way. Option two, if you like using tables, you can do the same thing we did up here when we graphed x squared, right? Where I had to put the vertex in the middle of the table and then just pick some points below and pick some points above, okay? So in other words, we could have said, oh, all right, f of x, and then we call it g of x here, okay? My new vertex here was at 2, 1, so I'll put 2 and then 1 right there. And I'll just pick, okay, 1 and 0 there, and I'll pick 3 and 4 right there. Okay, 2 below, 2 above, and just find their matching y values. Okay, you're going to get, well, you're going to get, what, uh, 2 and 2 here, and then uh, 5 and 5 there. Okay, based on what we get. So again, so put your vertex in the middle, and then find some more. So you can use a table and then plot those points and connect the dots that way. That way you don't have to worry about graphing that x squared first if you don't want to. Okay? Another option, graphing calculator, right? You can graph on your graphing calculator, go to the table in your graphing calculator. Okay, just look at the graph too and use that to help you. That's another option too. Okay? Questions on any of that? Yes, Josh. Correct. Right. There's no number written, but you would say one. So, right. Since this is a quadratic relationship, what the, the way it kind of like moves is, yes, from the vertex, you're going to go up one, right one. Okay. If there was another number here, like a two or a three, well, I'll show you what's going to be here in the next one. Okay. But yes, it's a vertical stretch. So instead of going up one, if it was a two in front, you would go up two. Okay. But then the, the next one after that, we're supposed to go up three, right one. Right, so then that would be doubled to be six. Instead of going up three, you go up six, okay? Well, so from up one, right one, there's your first point, right? But then to get from this point to this point, we're not gonna go up one, right one, we have to go up three, right one to get there. See what I'm saying? Okay, and so then if it had a two in front, we wouldn't go up three, we'd go up double that, so up six and then right one kind of thing. And I'll show you that here in a second. We're gonna do one right now. Okay, any other questions before we move on? I'll right, we'll do two more here. <clears throat> All right, next, um, we're going to graph 
oops, h of x equal to 2x squared uh, minus 3. Two x squared minus three. Okay, so again, x axis, y axis, no question. So this one I'll try to do with a table. Okay, this one I'll try and do with a table here if you want to see the table method. Okay, since I kind of showed that at the end for this, one. I'll show you this one with a table. Okay, so what kind of transformations are indicated here? What kind of transformations are shown? Down three because it's outside. The, it's outside the x there, so it is down. Okay, and what about that two in front? What's that going to do? A stretch, a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So in other words, it's going to get like more narrow because it's going to be stretching out. Okay. Yep. So let's take our normal vertex at zero zero, right? Because again, plain old x squared, right there in black, plain old x squared. Its vertex is at zero zero. We're going to shift that down three. So down one, two, three. There's our new vertex right there. Okay. So if I was going to make a table here, I would say, all right, x, and then uh, h of x here for this particular function. Okay. I'm going to put my vertex in the middle of my table. So it is x coordinate 0, y coordinate negative 3. Okay. And then I'm going to pick negative 1 and negative 2 there for that x, and then 1 and 2 as well, because I want to go 2 below it, 2 above it. Okay, and we'll just plug in negative 2 here. So negative 2 squared is 4 times 2. Minus 3, 5. Yeah, okay. Let's plug in negative 1. Negative 1 squared, 1 times 2, minus 3, negative 1. Okay? Plug in positive 1. Positive 1 squared, 1 times 2, 2, minus 3, negative 1 again. And then plug in 2. 2 squared, 4 times 2, 8, minus 3, 5. Okay, symmetry. You can see the symmetry here, right? Negative 2, 5, 2, 5. Negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. Okay, plot those points. So negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then negative 1, negative 1. And then 0, negative 3 we got. 1, negative 1. And then 2, 5. Okay, again, you can use that symmetry to your advantage there too. And then connect the dots. Okay, like so. And there's the transform function, right? You can totally see the stretch. Looks a little more narrow than our other functions. Because of the stretch. Okay? Question on any of that? All right, we'll do one more here and then I'll get you guys started on the um, review, which will have some graphing on it too. Okay, one more here. All right, last one. Let's graph f of x equal to negative 3 times x minus 2 squared plus 4. Okay, so this has got everything, every kind of transformation that we're going to have to be responsible for. Okay. So go ahead and... Draw my axes. I'm gonna draw this one pretty big because I think I think we'll need the space. Okay. All right. How does our vertex transform? How should we How should we shift our vertex? Right two and up four, or up four, right two, whichever direction, yeah, whichever order you want to do. Right two, up four. There's our new vertex. 
Okay, so again, if you like the table method, you can use the table method if you want to here. So we'll go uh, x and then f of x, put the vertex in the center of that table there, leave two spots above it, two spots below it there. So we have the point, um, what, 2, 4. So I'll do 1 and 0. I'll do negative, whoop, not negative, I'll do 3 and 4 there. Okay, so again, there's our vertex right there. So I'll plug in 0. Again, you're just plugging 0 into the function here. So it's 0 minus 2, negative 2, squared, 4, times negative 3, negative 12, plus 4, negative 8. Okay. Plug in 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Squared is 1. Times negative 3 is negative 3. Plus 4 is 1. Okay. Plug in 3. Minus 2 is 1. Squared is 1. Negative 3 is negative 3. Times negative 3 is negative 3. Plus 4 is 1. And then again, by symmetry, it's going to be negative 8 there as well. Okay, and then plot your points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ooh, barely made it. Here's the negative 8. Okay, and then there's 1, 1. There's 3, 1. And there's the last one. Okay, so you can see again that symmetry. Just connect the dots. Like so. Oh, off the screen. There we go. Okay. So you can see that reflection, like Teresa mentioned earlier, right? The negative A value, right? Reflects. It's now <coughs> concave down, like a frown, right? Okay. We shifted our vertex right to and up four from their origin, so right to up four. Okay. And Josh, this is what I was trying to get at earlier here. Maybe I can show it to you here as well. Okay. So folks, I told you that the slope here with the negative 3, right? I told you, like, the slope, that number is kind of still like the slope, right? If you look here, the next two points we get are down 3, right 1, like that slope indicates, down 3, right 1, and then also down 3, left 1. But then the next one is down, well, down 9 and right 1. Down 9 and right 1, or down 9 and left 1. And where does that come from? Well, if you go back to our original kind of parent function here, okay, from the vertex to the next point, the next nice point that we get, up one, right one, right? So there's your up one, right one, and then there's your down three, right one kind of thing. There's your next point, right? But then to go from that point to the next point, we have to go up three. So originally you go up one, right one, then up three, right one. The next point will be up five, right one, then up seven, right one, then up nine, right one, so on and so forth, okay? It's the odds. So with that negative three, Instead of going up 3 right one, we're going to go down 9, three times as much to that next point. Okay? And the next one, we should be going 5, so it's actually going to go down 15 and then right 1. And the next one should be 7, but we'll actually go down 21 and so on and so forth. Again, if, you, that's, if that's too much, you can always use this table right there to help you out. Okay? Put the vertex in the center and just get two points to the left and two points to the right. Okay? So there it is. Questions on any of that? All right, then, here's what I got for you. Okay, it is a quiz review. Tomorrow's quiz will look very similar. In fact, the only real differences are the numbers. Okay, so your assignment, all right, tonight is to, you don't have to do the whole thing, okay? I'd encourage you to do the whole thing because, again, it's good practice for tomorrow's quiz. What you must do is one question from each set. Okay, what do I mean by each set here? Well. Number one has two parts. You can pick one of those two. Number two has two parts. Pick one of the two, okay, to do. Three, pick one of the two. Four, there's actually four parts, A, B, and there's a C and a D on the top there. Pick one of those four and do that as part of your homework. And five, there's three, pick one to do. And in six, there's two, pick one to do, okay? I will be posting the answers to this on our Google Classroom, okay? So you can check your answers and stuff like that. Um, Please do not just copy my answer onto your paper to get an easy two points on your homework tomorrow or something like that, okay? Because yes, you might trick me, okay? There, the quiz is going to hurt you much more by not preparing for it, okay? So you get those two easy points there, but then you lose, lose points, you know, for the actual quiz. So don't do that, okay? Um, don't do that. Please make sure you actually try this out, okay? And again, you only have to do one from each section, but you can absolutely do one of them, and I would strongly encourage you to.
answer key right now, okay? So you'll be able to take a look. Take a look. And of course, I'll come around and help you guys as well. <laughs> 